thank you for coming. Uh, my name is František Algol Apfelbeck and today I will be presenting the Fermentation Experimental Center project. Uh, you may note me from the Food Ekim Base and other food drink bio related activities. Uh, we are also up, you know, out there you know, in the white tent, so you can come and see what we are actually doing. Uh, today I will go through the presentation of what I want to do in Europe in the next four to six years. So I will talk a bit about my background, what I have been doing for the last several years, and what I want to do in the next several years. So let's start. Okay, so introduction. Uh, my background is uh, Czech, if you want to know. Uh, I've been traveling for many years, left my country around 10 years ago, over that, and have been studying biotechnology mostly. So I have a degree in that field. was in uh, Czech Republic, Holland, uh, in Ireland. After that, I decided to leave the academy and I went further. I was involved with the slow food and organic movement, which I like very much and because I believe in sustainability. And I have got involved after that with the hacker community. That was basically in San Francisco in Noisebridge, which you may know. And that was around 2009, 10, let's say. And I, after that, I went to the Central America, traveled you know, these countries, moved to Asia. I have been there for several years now, and now I'm planning to come back. Uh, for me, the really hit with the Hacker Commit was Noisebridge, and for the slow food was Three Stone Heart, which was a very interesting project uh, where I learned a lot, especially about probiotic brewing. And I become a brewer, and actually my focus are fermentations. So what we'll be talking today are really not only, but it's quite strongly focused on a high quality fermented foods and beverages, which are part of your kind of, should be part of your daily routine. Uh, and the motto is bring together the art, science and technology. So I always say kind of, you know, the arts of our forefathers with what we know now, plus the tech which we got and which we are going to come with soon. Now, for the Kim base, you can see some of the people participate in here. Uh, it's a community group. Everybody is welcome. Uh, we play with the food, the drinks, you know, in an alternative way. Sometimes it's more kind of classic, you know, your dinner or lunch. Sometimes it's really alternative, like, you know, molecule cooking, you know, and different new approaches. We work, for example, on the experiment incubator, which you can see there. Anne Maris and Big Mac and others are involved in that. So we soldered, for example, several of our first PCV prototypes, you know, on this actually event and on the CCC camp. Uh, we do projects also which are focused more like, you know, really people, you know, you know, promotion to the people. You can see the probiotic drinks everywhere, which was distributing, you know, of probiotic drinks like kombuchas and water kefirs to the people. So we do that. And our idea is kind of, you know, really stay actually in the hacker movement and bring the food drinks bill into the hacker movement, to the hacker spaces, to the local communities, to the big international events where we are with the setup, which you can see outside when you go and, you know, visit us and basically making it clear that food and drink bio should belong to the movement. The movement is getting bigger and bigger, you know. We have now electronics, you know, you know, fat labs and everything kind of, you know, around it. So we believe that, you know, having food and drinks, you know, and fermentation, you know, it's a good idea too. So we are bringing it together. Uh, basically following the hack ethics. So we believe that, you know, open source kind of, you know, participation and be excellent in each other are very good things to do and we are trying kind of you know to go around these lines now uh that was hurricane base we are around for around five years from the finofurt where we started with the hackers on a plane and after we been more independent play you know independent way uh dancing drops is actually kind of related you know group uh, which i started with my girlfriend in korea i was now for three and a half years in korea and we basically try to develop more, like say, model which would get us resources through what we do. Because you have many ways how to do it, you know, you can go to your hacker space, you know, in the evening just to play after your work. Or you can try to do what you like, you know, during your day to earn your resources and have it as a main occupation. And I prefer to go that way, at least to a degree. Now, we have been in Jejudo, which is island south of uh, Korea. 
two years on something, it was interesting, but a bit hard on conditions because of the mentality especially. Codeine hierarchical structure and social kind of development is behind the West by two, three decades. So pushing something through is really hard. Classical business, okay. But something experimental, bringing people together around these things, working like, you know, more flexible, like, you know, like you are used for making spaces, not easy. However, we realized uh, during this time several things. Uh, if you want to do really project which is supposed to get your resources, your living expenses covered, is generally through these fermentations and so on, really everyday activity. So you have to be around and do stuff kind of on a regular basis. So you need to pick location and that should be your base. It's very important. And uh, you basically need a longer term uh, involvement. It takes years. So I have been now, this is actually I think third or fourth project. I started in Noise Bridge in San Francisco. We'll talk about it a little bit with Taste Bridge. After that, Onan One Labs in Ireland. After that, you know, I say so. After that, Korea. So it's over five, six years when I do this bit by bit. So accumulating the experience and definitely the longer term is important. So that would be kind of interesting but the conditions for me i said this is not where i want to have my main base so uh what i call basically this kind of you know idea is ferm experimental fermentation center uh, you can see here this is just overview the yeah, engine if you want to play with the fermentations as you know fermentation making your bread sauerkraut alcohol you know you know drinks you know there are many different ways it may be edible it doesn't have to be edible like you know by design you know you can do lots of things kind of you know in biotech which are not going to be edible at the end like you know biofuels and so on but it's still fermentation using microbes to make it happen however Concerning especially the foods, it's really ancient. You know, we have been making meat, you know, 20, 30,000 years ago. People were accumulating around places like, you know, in the old Egypt, Mesopotamia, bread making, you know, you know, you know, uh, beer making, you know, it's there for a long time. Nice example from the Europe, the medieval monasteries making, for example, beers, which we tasted yesterday, you know, on our beer tasting. Uh, it was a great source, basically, of places where the monks were together really dedicated to experimenting and the daily chores, getting resources also from the four lords and let's say the church. So you have also their kind of that, you know, sell, you know, crowdsourcing, let's say, you know, and the community based, you know, uh, place where they really go through the stuff and accumulate the knowledge and experiment. So definitely experimental center, you know, to a degree. You can you know, I have here just, you know, from Czech Strahov Monastery is quite, you know, famous, you know, 1120, I think around 1350, they have their own brewery and we're doing, you know, really high quality kind of herbal beers and so on. Belgium is the same kind of, so you have a long history of that even in Europe. Now, uh, modern times, you have the business, non-profit academy, let's say it's a basic. Uh, I have been in academy for many years, so I know the background there, left it because of a variety of reasons. Uh, you can see some here, uh, you have some advantage, like there's a lots of money going to the economic government-based research. There are yeah, huge funds. Uh, however, you have to invest quite lots of time to be able to actually work with the money if you want to work on your uh, projects. Easy to 10 years, you know, of career investment. Uh, there's a hierarchy which you have to basically follow. Loads of bureaucracy concern and paperwork. There are, you know, advantages, disadvantages. But it's strong, sturdy. You can go basically anywhere around the world and you will get support as a PhD postdoc, whatever. But you have to make it at least to these positions. Otherwise, you'll be a monkey if you want to stay in academy. On the other hand, with the hacker movement emerging, uh, well, there are no safe guarantees, you know, how you will be kind of funded in a few years' time. But if you come up, come up with something interesting and you really put the energy in and try to promote it, uh, generally people support you at least for the test. You know, they give you a chance. And I like that because if you prove this has kind of, you know, we say in Czech, the head and heel, you know, so there's some kind of really logical flow in that, you know, and you show that you can do it with the others and there are people supporting that. You can gather more resources and go farther. 
uh, is definitely much weaker kind of in funding maybe than the academic research, but also you have much more flexibility. And what I like and what I didn't actually, what I really didn't like about academic research for me personally, that most of the research have, which I have seen was focused on Okay, come with the idea, come with the knowledge, technology, but generally for the really big scale corporation based, you know, uh, monsters to a degree. Uh, not too much of small to medium scale kind of, you know, development. A production, small to medium scale, not too much interested, interesting for academic research, what I have seen. This is something what, for example, I won't definitely do in the hacker movement, the small scale. So anyway, this was just an overview. For me, the food, drink, and biohacking in hacker spaces is very important. You can just imagine, you know, if you kind of think about being involved with the hacker movement and uh, working all of you on Microsoft Windows. You know, you know, kind of, you know, that's basically how to a degree it looks like in the real world if you start to talk about the bio and fermentation absolutely majority of the power kind of aids with big corporations and it's very hard to do basically anything around it from the laws that you can actually do something commercially or experimentally to kind of real real world when you play with it even on a home scale it's really dominated very strongly by the big corporation which is natural it's everywhere so i would like to help to basically put it a bit down and bring more this to the hacker movement so we can use similar tools and approach which we do already for the open source you know software and so on it's very important now now what is uh, what is the physical kind of and virtual what is the experimental center think about it very simply uh, experimental kitchen bio lab let's say where you can play with stuff you can measure ph's you know you can do some really like you know slow kind of you know low temperature cooking you can make many projects it's up to you there's a really whole scale if you want to see come to the food hacking base you know we do lots of things there on the events uh you should have a workshop venue so you should educate so you experiment one place and educational workshop space, like you have quite for sure in your hacker space. Uh, not too much more is needed, you know, maybe extra sync. You know, so kind of it's not you know major kind of difference. And you need some equipment, ingredients, storage place. So you know what you know from the hacker space basically applies, you know, to the experimental fermentation center, which hopefully will be part of your hacker space too. Uh, you should definitely, if you want to survive, uh, uh, respect your fellow hackers because if you are going to make some nice smelly kind of you know strong fish ferment or cheese uh, not everybody may be happy with it especially it explodes all over your kitchen uh, so you should keep in mind there are other people who would like to survive you know they're hacking even you know uh, evening uh, so uh, think about it from the perspective that uh, hacker space or the place which you are kind of attached to should always be able to survive even with your involvement and preferably you help through the food and drink you know making the beer you know in your hacker space you know doing the workshop about that making the dinner you know for your member meeting you help to generate some resources for your activities but also for the hacker space and bring the community together that's very important because this is something what i think the food actually i know food and drink can make amazingly well bringing together through the preparation few people and coming together it's great so this is i think what i expect uh, really from the hacker space to see more and thankfully it's catching up more hacker spaces have kitchens which are actually really usable they are being used you know, on a regular basis even for the events bigger events and this is the base because you need even usual people who don't have so much time they have the professions to make the a really kind of the basic network so you can come for the workshop or you can call for some special project and the foundations are already there like you know electronic workshop is beautiful you know soldering workshop but if you don't have a benches and power and soldering irons it's getting a bit more costly and expensive if it's already there you have small electronic lab in the hacker space well then you can easily call for many activities because it's there similar thing with the kitchen and stuff like that so think simply, it's really basically nicely equipped kitchen with some special tools, let's say, and a place where you can call for 10, 15 people to come and give a workshop. Educational, let's say experimental, educational. Now, uh, later on we will see, oh yeah, community, of course, it's community-based. Think again around the hackerspace, you know, motto, similar thing. Uh, yep, I mentioned everything here. 
Now, examples, just very quickly, I talked already about the taste bridge, noise bridge. Noise bridge, you know, in San Francisco? Drama bridge for some, you know. <laughs> uh, noise bridge is big, you know, Hacker Center in San Francisco. We did taste bridge around 2010. I was involved before a bit. Uh, I went to Cuba to be interrogated and I have a lots of fun, you know, on the borders. I was starting a multimedia center there. Didn't where I went as well as I would like to. Uh, the taste bridge basically was half year of really experimenting with the brewing, especially doing workshops, you know, on day, a weekly basis and doing the membership events, you know, five minutes of talk, kind of, you know, for 300 people, you know, food, etc. It was great. It was really, really amazing. Uh, on and one, the brewmasters were in uh, Hall, uh, sorry, in Galway, in Ireland. Again, half year of experimenting with the people, bringing it together. Later on, they started actually their own, you know, brewing uh, courses, uh, which were given by the local brewing shops. So they have a really nice collaboration, very cheap and very good quality courses, you know, which brought a lot of people into the beer brewing, especially. So it catch up, which was really nice. Uh, food hacking base, I already mentioned. We are here, you know, outside, and we have been on the, we have been on the, I think, last six, seven CCC events. Now getting really a whole setup like, you know, experimental kitchen educational venue, annually biolab on every event. Uh, then sing drops, I mentioned that's my activity in Korea, where I play and, you know, kind of investigate. Now, uh, just to summarize, what I expect from the experimental fermentation center, uh, experimentation and innovation. So really not only make your lunch, you know, you know, uh, or dinner for the member meeting, but really playing with the new technologies, bring them in, which means, you know, combine with technology because that's something where the people in a slow food, for example, are very, very touchy, new technology. But once you introduce them something which is nice and kind of, you know, actually respects even traditional ways, they love it. Uh, educational classes, programs, you know, workshops. So you do all workshops, you know, you document it. Later on, you can make a whole programs like on the academy or in the educational kind of, you know, structure. Uh, I like applied. So for example, for me, definitely for the experimentation center, I want to see a pilot production. And uh, if not a pilot production in your own facility, at least a collaboration. Because it's very important for me, the cycle from really coming with the research, education, and later on production is very important. Because you know, then you have a whole thing which you can see how it works and if it actually works in reality. It's crucial. Uh, binding of the community, the hackerspace I already mentioned. This, this project may be a topical that it's a hackerspace which is focused especially on this, with also electronic and computing around it, but the main focus is bio space, or it can be a part of some another hacker space. There are both options, and many different people will have a preferences in the future, because of course I hope, and I go after making this happen in many hacker spaces. So there will be places which are more focused on this and less. It's natural. natural. Now, uh, in my case, when I do this, uh, if I want to do it, you know, kind of on a full-time basis, I do need to cover my living costs, you know, through that. Otherwise, I cannot do it. It's as simple as that. I'm not a rich man. So I have to find ways of funding. We will talk about it later on. And the basic line, extend to each other. I like that because that means there is some standard which can be kept and goes forward. Now, what should be in it? Community-based, open source, you know that, documentation friendly, so you get your stuff online and you share it. Uh, expand venue, educational venue, theoretical background and practical. So you have both practice and theory, it's very important. Uh, I would like to see residency in the future. I'm actually really pushing for this you know, as much as I can uh, within the hacker movement because I believe the residencies are the key for the future, preferably physically separated from the hacker space, because if you have it together, there are issues, but I would like to see in this project also a residency, but it's not a priority, but it would be nice to have it there. And the small scale production I mentioned. Now, this is basically just a very simple picture what we were supposed to look at the CCC camp and other events, and in a way, if you play with that, a little bit. This is how it is it going to look like in some building, you know, in the future. Uh, you have, let's say, the experiment, the kitchen as a base, you know, where you have the kitchen tables, storing spaces, you know, and where you play, bio lab, let's say. Uh, you have virtual venue where you can get your 10 to 20 people who are working on the tables, you know, again, some shelves, etc. 
presentation venue depends where you are. You know, some places have, you know, like, you know, if you go for a big conference, okay, you have a presentation venue. If you are in your spot, kind of, there's no need for that. It may be office. And let's say small bio lab where you play really kind of with things which shouldn't be, for example, on the kitchen table all the time, right? Because, you know, they are, sometimes you are doing stuff which doesn't exactly belong in your burger and it may get a bit too wild, let's say. So, this, if you put it together and uh, into the house like this, you know, you can actually imagine this place, this room, maybe 30% bigger, 50%, it can be done. Like, you know, that's uh, space, you know, if you nicely kind of play with that, with the cooling, etc. This is more or less what we are talking about, not too much more. It can be more, of course, you know, but it doesn't have to be. So, now, uh, what I want to do now in Europe in the next, let's say, yeah, six to uh, four to six years at least. First of all, I want to move to Europe from Korea. That's kind of the step number one to get here because I'm coming for the events for a long time and it's a bit tiring, you know, especially if you leave for two months and you have to sort everything about, you know, for two months and not being there. Uh, moving to Europe and uh, first year, which is the phase number one of three, prepare really the project proposal and the financial plan. Uh, I want to collaborate on this project. These are highlights with the others. Uh, I have around 14 years actually of both kind of academical and uh, hacker kind of, you know, experience. So around six, seven years now in a hacker movement and before long time in academy. Uh, I want to focus on the strong real world kind of, you know, stuff. Sometimes hackers like to really be flashy and play around. Uh, I understand it, but it's not exactly my motivation of being active in the movement. I like to see my things done in real life and working. I really like, you know, things which you develop, this model applied somewhere in Mexico or Palestine or other places, you know, that's what I'm basically after to a degree, seeing it really work and being self-sustaining. Uh, I'm up to date. I have to be, and uh, yeah, resources collaboration. Now, the main aim, this important slide. I want to establish community which is both stable in a physical and virtual world, uh, where people can basically experiment, learn, and uh, apply their knowledge. As simple as that, complex, the circle. Uh, the end, Actually, during the process, let's say, at the end, there should be a sustainable model which can function covering itself. Of course, there will be different types of funding, so it will be flexible. It has to be flexible, especially in these days, but sustaining model which you can apply in different places if you make the modifications. At least the first major kind of project has to be sustainable. Otherwise, it cannot continue, of course. Uh, I would like to promote this one is on the level of promotional kind of, you know, quality around the world and see people, you know, joining and do it, you know, if they like. So this is the basic, over, you know, over idea. Now, uh, I have one more slash than I should like. Uh, there are three phases, one, two, three. There are some finances, let's say money, kind of, you know, counting. Uh, be easy on the money because basically, before I have a time in the first phase to sit on my ass for a year, year, year and a half to really prepare it, these are all predictions. And farther in the future they go, less kind of, you know, exact they are. And things can be put down very much depending who offers what for this project. So the first one, the timeline, one, one and a half year. I want to start next year. So it's really close. I basically will prepare the project really on the paper and the business plan. Hopefully in the place where I want to start it. So now I'm touring the Europe, looking for a location. What would be the best place to do this? So far, it looks like Berlin is the kind of number one, but we didn't decide it yet with my girlfriend. We do it together. Now, uh, I will be looking for fundings through different foundations, personal kind of, you know, donations, community donations for the first year, of course, when I'm preparing that. And after that, already preparing for the first, let's say, two, three years of running and build up. Uh, 
what I would like to see in this project is academic shielding. Uh, I want to get someone on the academy who actually will be my, uh, let's say, face for the academic world, so I can do it as a PhD. There are different reasons for that. One, that sometimes my systematic approach is a bit weak, and being signed for something helps to me very much. Also, once you have a PhD status, uh, you have a lot of privileges, which can help very much with funding and going around to do what you want. Uh, do not underestimate it. I had PhD status before, and it's very handy for certain things. Uh, newsletters, portals, like, you know, really nice, you know, web presence. We already have some things with the Fudek in base. So, you know, improve it further and have this project as a part of it. Let's say separate entity, but nice web interface with a good kind of, you know, uh, internet flow, let's say. Newsletters reporting that you do something and having basically selected the location within this year, year and a half, I need to be sure where to start. So I need to physically find during this preparation phase where I can sit in your hacker space, you know, looking around, preparing, I need to find a physical spot where I can make the experimental venue, educational venue, and hopefully the pilot production happen. So I have to find location in this time, which is, you know, a year and a half, reasonable kind of money, you know, kind of not too much, etc. That's not so much time. So it will be busy. Uh, I do expect, if I do not have any special offers, constant accommodation, you know, substitutes and whatever, year, year and a half, 20 to 30,000 euros, something like that, I may need, if I'm supposed to easily cover whatever I need and go around promoting this project. What I want to see, basically already, you know, done within this phase, you already heard, I want to have location secure, basically, within this time, uh, and plan for the budget and real development of the project for the whole phase as much as possible. That means there will be focus okay. We'll be, for example, doing these projects within this kind of, you know, we'll be doing probiotic drinks. We'll make wonderful kombucha, we'll monitor what are the pages, like really a project, and we'll get it to the people for this price, seeing the cost effectivity, one of the projects. For that, of course, you need to have the place where you play with that where you teach it and where you make it. So I need to do these things, you know, to be ready to basically start the project in physical form. Uh, I need to promote it on some international activity, uh, sorry, events, like, you know, CCC event. It would be nice to be, for example, able to go one or twice around the world, like, you know, to the some event in Germany, you know, America or, you know, Australia, whatever, so I can promote and con interlink. Uh, I expect you may be better with that in Germany that uh, two people in Germany, 1,200, 1,500 euros per month probably is necessary. So I'm counting something around that if there is no kind of help with accommodation, things like that, because there are always, you know, options which can bring it down. And I definitely want to bring the money down. Uh, ways of sourcing already mentioned, personally community support. I have some community which supports me, uh, some patron hopefully, and crowdsourcing some crowdsourcing basically and variety of ethical reasonable resources i am not a big fan of uh, darpa and funding like that so i would definitely like to keep kind of you know out of that if possible actually not if possible uh, i want to keep out of that you know the dot finished so that was the first phase basically in a summarization year year and a half on my ass somewhere basically preparing and securing the space and resources. Now, the next year, uh, that's basically the time when I actually start with the others, build up the place, so we actually make it happen. So if you can imagine this place, okay, we are setting up the experimental kitchen workshop venue and you start to use it. So you need to build it and you start to use it, running basically different workshops and experiments, you know, which you can get the resources for and which actually show what you are doing and you do what you want actually kind of you start to make it happen uh, we will be constructing as i mentioned and testing the infrastructure i think one year is a very short period of time but it will be overlapping with the previous year i hope so kind of you know i think it's doable but it will be sharp uh, of course you know you need resources for that so there are again some estimations you know uh, the build-up is kind of 
low because you will have to make it hopefully with your friends. Once you start to really uh, ask for the working force, you know, professional working force, the things will spike very quickly. So I hope to be able to get some location actually, which is as cheap as possible or a donation from someone that you can use it for five years or so and reconstruct it basically to the people. Like when you move, you know, your hackerspace to a new location. If you get a deal, you know, kind of, you know, really low rent, you know, and you make it happen, you know, within a year, basically putting it together. Something like that in a simple words. Uh, and yeah, starting to work on it. Uh, by the end of this phase, this should be operational. That means you use it. You use it on a daily basis, it works, you know. Uh, you are running your classes, your workshops, your experiments. Uh, the production facility, which I don't talk so much about, most likely, realistically, it's not going to be the same place. Because generally, once you want to legally produce some food or drinks in EU, there are loads of obligations. So it's highly likely that the experiment educational venue will be one spot and the production somewhere else. If there are too much issues with that, the production facility may have to be collaborating with some already established entity which has all the paperwork. Because I don't want to kill the project just because the production is bother. It's important, but you know, it's not the only thing. Uh, I'll be, of course, handing in the academic reports because, you know, I will have to progress on this field to keep it structural. And I do hope that we may have some hacker residency in, which is important for the people to be able to come and stay. Because especially with the fermentations, you know, uh, the workshops and uh, programs, they are generally not just one or two days. If you want to get into it, it takes a bit longer sometimes weeks, sometimes months. So residency for us is really quite important. And I believe in general for the hackerspaces, the residencies are really next step. Uh, we will have to have, of course, the money for operation and money for the running the next years. Uh, the main third phase, basically, it's to really run it. We are talking now about two years of kind of, you know, preparations and build up together. Now it's a time actually to really make it happen and focus fully on doing the things on the ground using the already established facilities. So this should be the time when basically the main build up is done and you build up the knowledge, the experience, and you start kind of, you know, to touch other kind of centers in collaboration. Uh, you should start from the beginning to try to secure your resources. So you need different types of funding from the crowdsourcing funding, which is nice for the beginning, but generally not for the running long term. Membership fees, paid workshops, you know, you name it. Production, you know, kind of, you know, you know, bringing money from that. There are many ways and I would like to have different structures in. Different, basically, flows of cash from different resources. I think it's really important. Uh, the food and drink bio tours, we are now actually on the tour. So I would like to start to do tours too. So again, promoting, you know, around the hacker spaces and go to the international events. That's, I think, crucial. We do it with the food hacking base and I think it's really fun when you establish all what I'm talking about here on the spot and you can come and learn how to make your cheese, you know, or, you know, how to make, you know, you know, whatever you like, you know, you know burgers, you know, in a cool way, you know, there are many ways. So promotion on the international events helps very much. Uh, continuing collaboration with Academy and hopefully having the hacker residency in that time. Again, estimation of the budget, running facility like that, you know, with also living, covering some living costs, I can easily imagine around 35,000, 50,000 yearly. It depends, you know, on what deal you get. It can be half, may not. I'm not sure this is what I have to find when it's ready. Now, I am getting a bit boring, I think. I'm sorry, but <laughs> in a way, I have to go through that because this is going to be online. And it's also for the people to see kind of, and me for to see, you know, in the years kind of where my, where my thoughts in this moment. But at the moment, it's kind of really step by step, you know, what has to be done and how it's going to be done as far as I can imagine now. Uh, by the final phase, I mean, this is basically around four years in the future. This model, the facility is running for two to three years. You should be at the moment really close to sustainability that you can get your resources 
by doing what you like. Uh, so the model is getting really sustainable. It was tested for several years, a uh, few years at least, and it's starting to be really kind of established. Let's say that's the word maybe. Uh, you need, of course, at the moment, because you are finishing up the project, uh, make sure that your budget is kind of, you know, taken care of. So there is not a huge, you know, hundred, you know, thousand euro, uh, debt, you know, at the end. So you have to make sure that the money are clean. You know, you have been, what you have been using, you use properly. And, uh, there are no kind of, let's say, restraints for the future development. And you should have your future goal set because, you know, the project which you are running for two, four to six years is now being completed as a kind of functional, uh, functional thing. And you would like to promote it further and move to the next project, which may be based around this, or it may be also another project kind of, you know, using parts of this. That depends. It's, you know, up to six years in the future. So it's hard to say at the moment, but basically this is really the completion of the thing. So you have to summarize it, make it nice and present it. I will now run quickly just so you see actually the stuff. First phase, third phase, uh, sorry, first, second, and third phase. If you see one and a, one and a half here for the beginning, I am now looking around for the funds to make it happen. That's 20 to 30,000 euros. If I don't have any special deal, I think much less if I can get a space where I can work from and some accommodation in Berlin, whatever. So if you think about it, know something, let me know. There are contexts at the end. Uh, second phase will be developed during the first phase, logically. And it's basically about the buildup of the real facilities and getting, getting the funds for it, of course. It will take around one year, one year and a half. The first two, let's say three years, something like that. After that, you run the thing for two years, uh, three, depending. And that's actually really using and doing the project by itself or before it's actually preparation. Very important, but it's for the, let's say, third phase where you do it. You know, that's the one where you kind of really do stuff. And final phase, you summarize it. As you can see, you know, it's basically again, you know, one to two years publishing, you know, making your know, PhD report dissertation. And of course, getting it all out, you know, online, you know, so people kind of see on CCC Congress, et cetera, what you have done. Of course, the reports will be handed, you know, in this way, you know, during the time, but that will be the major phase for really, okay, I have done this. It works. You know, thank you very much. Hopefully, of course. Uh, and total time, I estimate within six years this can be done. It should be done within six years. Uh, total estimated funds at the moment, I can imagine around 200, 250,000 if basically no special deals are reached. I can imagine around half of it if I can get, you know, like, okay, here are your keys, you know, we don't use this brewery anymore. And, you know, you can play with it for five years for a really nice rent. It's very, very different on the situation. And now I'm looking basically for the ways how to do it as cheap as possible. Because if I don't have to find this money, I can find one fourth of it or one half. I'm very happy because it's much less work on my side. And I don't like basically burning resources. Second hand used, I'm absolutely happy with that. Do it for years and I love to promote that. Use what was used in a fine way and build it in a way it lasts. That's my philosophy. So I don't have a problem with use equipment, etc. That's what I'm actually aiming for. Now, summary, six years, 2016 to 2021. So quite furious, you know, the future. These are the money which may be needed. I hope less. But if no specialties are there, this will have to be kind of found by me somewhere. And the project of the benefit, which is priceless, of course. It's going to be a huge benefit to the hacker community and the worldwide future of uh, Biobomb and others. Now, this is just the info and my thanks to the Food Hacking Base as a group, which uh, I have been part of for now several years and uh, which is getting bigger and more active on many different events. Uh, who has been actually with us at the CCC camp this time? At least pop in. Yeah, good, good, good. So please do that, you know, again at the Congress. We will definitely find some way through, you know, how to be there as usually. Uh, and I would like to basically ask, uh, thank uh, to the Herm, which is, uh, uh, foundation, uh, by friend Moritz, who is basically working there and who got me here from Korea. So my plane ticket is very much recovered by them. And this is a thing which is trying to basically filter the resources from EU grants and so on 
to be used within the hacker movement with minimum of strings attached. So that's something what you want in the future to use, you know, if it goes all good. Uh, these are my contacts. Uh, if you want to support me, you can send me bitcoins. I'm happy with that. Uh, my very outdated but still a bit upkept uh, pages, uh, definitely the email. There you can talk directly. And you can add the uh, IRC channel for the King base where I'm quite often. So if you can think about the ways, if you know someone who I should talk about that, please let me know by the email, spread it around. I'll be running now to Balkan, where I'll be presenting something in uh, Balkan in Serbia. And we will be, of course, you know, on the CCC Congress. And by the spring of the next year, I want to basically start the preparation phase most likely in Berlin, but I'm not decided yet, depending on the offer. And we will go on since there. Uh, thank you very much for coming and for joining. Now I will end up the official part of uh, presentation and I will be open to the questions so we can discuss actually what I have been talking about, you know, so you can give me your input and so on. So thank you and open. Thank you. So the first one, yes. Mm. No, uh, basically, okay, I am fine with the beer, but actually one of the things which I really enjoy about the hacker movement is that it's not too much alcoholic, I would say. So my focus are non-alcoholic drinks and foods. So you can imagine like sauerkraut, for example. Imagine sauerkraut being produced, imagine probiotic beverages like kombucha, water kefirs, you know. Many of them are, sorry? Yeah, cheeses, you know, soybean ferments, like, you know, you know, probably miso, things like that. Uh, not all of that, because you will have to make decisions. You cannot do everything all the time on a commercial level. Different things, for example, the workshop, you know, like, you know, educational, like, you know, getting knowledge and technology, nice way for the small to medium scale. So it's efficient and really you apply the today's technology, which you can use open source, like, you know, you have your experiment incubators, you know, which you can easily build and you don't have to worry that you copy it from somewhere. But the products, I would say there will be some alcoholic products, I hope. It may be butter, but the thing is that alcoholic products generally last for longer if you do them well and they pay your bills because it's drug, so people want it. You know, now, now I, I know, but it is uh, as simple as that. You know, selling a bottle of kombucha, which is very healthy and good for you, is one thing, and selling, you know, really nice, you know, kind of, you know, uh, lambic beer, you know, to someone, you know, with a beautiful raspberry or non-raspberry flavor, generally it's much more easy. It's just as that. So this would be the products, yes, but generally I would focus on non-alcoholics, but I probably will have all alcoholic products too. Yeah. If I remember correctly, it was prohibited to produce like uh, beers that are that don't uh, agree with the German like, the idea of beer. These things I will have to go a yeah, pretty love. I will have to go through all of these lovely things. So that's a project by project. So if we want to make the beer, which is likely, we'll have to focus on the beer, what you can do or not, and how you are going to call it. Because of course, you know, you can call it then, you know, otherwise, but yes, these are specific things for the project. What you can do actually, what you can. And of course, the info you should share later on, because if you find a ways around it, you know, that's exactly what many people, you know, would like to know, not all in, in Germany, but in the different places. Yeah. So, yeah, products will be there and uh, you have to be careful. I have learned in Korea, once you start to produce something, you need to do it on a regular basis generally, especially if you are really into supplying your local community, let's say, which is around you physically, because they will buy it. But generally, they will buy it if it's regular. Like if you have your cheese, you know, once per half year or two months and nobody knows when is it going to be happening, that's one thing. If you have your beer, cheese, etc., every week on this time and they can come and get it or you deliver it, then it's a different story. And you can get lots of resources through these things, but you or someone else has to be around to do it. So it's a great way of source and from the local community, which is very important, you keep the bounds and it keeps you in a real world which is a problem with many hackerspaces sometimes, well, some, they are 
really disconnected from the surrounding. But if you have this connection, which I really believe should be rebuilt, the hacker spaces with the biospaces in them should be really more in touch with the local environment and help to educate and basically sort out issues which we have on the local level. So this, however, really means you need to be around or someone has to be around and do the chores. They give you resources on a regular basis, they build your community, your reputation, everything. But you have to be there. So, you know, like, you know, going somewhere for two months, you have to sort it out. Like I did now in Korea, you know, you have to have someone around or not. But then you are having issues. Next question. Give me next question. Come on. Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Some biobomb or something, you know, kind of crazy GMO, nothing there. Is there someone who is actually fermenting in the room? I know about few. Yeah, fermenters. What do you do? Beers? Bread. Bread. So I make bread. Okay. Sorry? Bread. Okay. With sourdough starter? Uh, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely baking, you know, it's very interesting. And I have seen, for example, in Korea these days getting really up because Korea doesn't have a bread, uh, bread baking traditionally. They do the other stuff, you know, but the fermentation of bread is kind of catching up. And I have seen, for example, in the United States, uh, with the breads are no problem, but the probiotic drinks. They started a few decades ago, uh, like first, you know, Sparrow's Rig commercial production. Kombucha is now really big. When I was around 2010 around, it was really what you find in a health shop as a healthy drink, which, you know, improves your digestion and your kind of, you know, immunity reaction, everything. It was kombucha. And many different brands from big, small providers, but nothing else. Now I've checked, you know, the market, you know, a few years later, finally the water kefirs are making it. Uh, but it's kind of, again, first things like in Europe, very hard to still find water kefir with flavor, which is generally more appealing to the people than kombucha. And you can see, you know, hopefully kefir, you know, drinks, you know, start to kind of appear. So, for example, I know for this project, if we manage to get the production right, uh, which means we get all the agreements which we need, uh, definitely on the field of probiotic drinks, there is a spot. Because the water kefirs are not here yet. I do it, for example, for several years already. Uh, honey-based drinks are not here too much yet, fermented ones, you know. You have generally sugar-based, so if you make it from the honey, you are definitely, you know, doing something really new and interesting. So from the production point of view, we have, for example, this. So, yeah, probiotic drinks, you know, is a part of it. Anyway, question, question. Oh, you'll close it up, you know, because time is clicking and another speaker is around. Yeah. Have you heard about the case in um, producing heat uh, they enabled in the form of biosystems? Yeah, and what the yeast is supposed to do? Something specific, like, you know, some good stuff for you, which you put in your weight, or just for brewing or other purposes? No, it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. Ah, uh, vegan cheese. Yeah, yeah. I have heard about that. I have to say, I was, because I'm not vegan, I have to say, I am a bit uh, not so much in this kind of field. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, it's, I have seen, you know, different projects, you know, in the hacker movement. Uh, there is a DIY bio uh, movement, which is focused mostly on molecular biology and the genetic engineering. Not too much in the food, actually nearly not at all. They were doing some stuff, you know, in uh, definitely they are active, you know, in the Bay Area and different places now around the world. And they, I know they were doing the glowing plant. You could catch that Kickstarter, you know, a few years ago. Uh, there was a solar mill, you know, this another group, solar mill kind of, you know, so I'm, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Uh, basically soy based uh, artificial food, which gives you everything. So there are projects actually in the hacker movement which are focused, let's say, on the food, some of them. But there's issue that some of them are kind of being abused. Uh, because when you check, for example, the project, you know, when it's running and after, people, for example, don't have too much uh, background. Like they are, for example, software engineers, which, you know, it's fine with me, you know. But if you want to make a major project which needs several years of funding and expertise with few guys who, for example, do not have that and have to go, of course, later on to collaborate with the pharmaceutical companies, the corporation basically kind of, you know, standard, then you have definitely, at least for some people who are into this, some ethical kind of questions, actually, is this the way which it should be done? 
or not. I want to start to build from the ground, as I did for many years. It's harder uh, to get the resources and support, but I have found out that when you do it this way, you get the thing re into the movement. And I like it because uh, then you really affect the movement and you do it through the movement. Uh, for example, one thing, you know, I talk about the hack residencies, which I had issue, you know, with like not having enough and getting less attention, I think, than they should. Because if you want to call for a project for two, three months, for example, a few weeks, you need people to be able to be around, hopefully for less resources, because many of the hackers do not have that, you know, three, five thousand, you know, euro kind of, you know, uh, wages, especially the young ones, you know, you know, not all, but, you know, you want to put down the initial cost of participation, like with hackerspaces, like having your membership a fee, 100 euro and 30. It's a big difference. And, you know, it's going down during the years. Thankfully, you know, the hackerspaces are trying to make slide and scale, but it was not there all the time, you know. Like, you know, I remember, you know, in, uh, in Noise Bridge, we had 100 euro, you know, sorry, 100 dollar, you know, you know, basic 50 hungry hacker. And you, be, you know, it was very flexible. You could be around, etc. But there were hackerspaces with similar approach, like 100 euro. You don't have it? Well, yeah, sorry. Kind of that approach, that changed a lot. Now the residencies, I believe, can give you another kind of, you know, opening. And uh, I started to talk about it, you know, what I mentioned. Hacker residencies, the resources. It's just kind of, you know, really lowering the cost of participation so you can do it. That means also, you know, kind of the cost of living kind of in general. If I work on this project, uh, if I have to pay rent, etc., you know, every month, you know, around 400 euros is one thing. If there is a place which actually we can live together, you know, and you pay 100 euro, uh, it's, it's, it's a different story. Like, you know, it's, you know, a third of your budget is kind of not wasted. So that will be the thing. And yeah, definitely doing it through the movement and getting people in the hacker movement resources more from what they do. Because if you have to work somewhere 40 hours per week to make your living, then basically you are investing zero, uh, 40 hours, you know, of your time, quality time into something as anyone to do. So, for example, for me, a long term, I believe in, OK, I want to work on this. I have a project. I have spot for you if you want to join. I will give you probably a bit less than you would get from the corporation, you know, kind of, you know, whatever, but still enough that you can join. So if you're after the money, you'll go for the corporation. But if you are really after this and you would like to do it with the hackers around, well, it's still doable for you. And we need to get to the level where basically people can, you know, they can be around, pay their social insurance, you know, their living standards so they do not go, you know, kind of dumpster diving every night. You can do it if you like it but you should not have to do it. And that's basically part of the, what I want to do with this. Focus on the fermentation, food, drink, you know, like really building more places where people can do it in the local community, some more educational, some more practical, but spreading it around and make it more easy for the people. Because I have seen people, it's also about the technology, like, you know, you can make your kombucha in a way which is much more efficient, better flavor. And if you want to do it like, you know, for your living, you'll have a big advantage towards the other kind of people, uh, general corporations on the field, because of course the corporate sector is very strong. You know, like, you know, in the United States, you know, most of the production of the good stuff in the health food shops, which are very expensive, it was basically from the big corporation. It was very hard to push it through. So anyway, it's kind of, it's all complex together. If there's more question, I can answer it. Otherwise, so we can go and we can check food hacking base, you know, what my girlfriend make for the lunch. I think that's a kimbap and kind of, it's a Korean version of sushi. So I'll be snacking on that definitely. And you can talk to me in the next few hours or on the next event or online. We'll be busy, we will be a bit busy with the packing today. So we have to make everything right. Uh, but I will be available and I hope to talk and spread the news that basically I'm coming back to Europe. I am looking for a place where to make this happen, for the funding, talk to the people and spread it around, okay? Thank you and enjoy the rest of the MRM CD, which was very, very nice. I'm happy to be here and I think for the Hacking too. Okay? Good. Shall I switch over the microphone? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Okay.